so what I'd like to do now is now that we have a base class is I want to think a little bit about what kind of animations are we um, going to script. So let's go ahead and pause this and jump back into Unity. And inside this um, character folder, I'm going to make another folder and I'm going to call this um, hero scripts or just hero. And this is where we'll put our pop can in or pop can script. So I'm going to go inside of here and I'm going to right click and create a C sharp script. And I'm going to name this pop can character controller. And I want to point something out. Sometimes you'll right click and create a C sharp script, click off of it and notice it says new behavior script here. If I rename this to whatever I want, notice that my uh, name here, public class new behavior script is different than the name of my script. And I bring this up because a lot of times um, students will double click this and they'll get an error and they'll be like, why does it say, you know, like for example, if I try to attach this, they get an error, it says, can't add script, this script needs to derive from mono behavior, or this script doesn't exist. And the reason for that is because the name of the script, it has to be the same as the name of the class here. So I'm just gonna delete this, and it'll remove it from my, uh, my uh, Visual Studio there. And I'm gonna double click pop can character, and here's our pop can character script. So let's take a moment and just sort of um, write down what some of the animations that we plan on coding uh, are. I know I want some sort of um, attack. So what this is, is this is called a comment, these two lines. And um, what that does is that doesn't let the compiler, so notice that this has a, co a comment here. This is just a way of telling other people who are working on your game um, what you're trying to do. And um, it doesn't actually compile or do anything in the code itself. So it's really just a way of letting your, keeping track of your own ideas, these comments, or letting other people know. So here's attack. Here's t we want to do uh, maybe some sort of punch, a run. We want our can to jump. And let's see what else. We, our character has going to die, and then it has to play some sort of already dead animation. So these are all animations that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and I'm going to jump back into Maya and start working on those animations. So I have my animation list, right? Attack, punch, run, jump, die, and dead. So my punch will probably be a headbutt. So I might end up naming it headbutt in um, Visual Studio or when I go to script this. So down here at the bottom is an animation timeline. You can see it starts here from one up to 120. And Maya actually has a view. Um, if you go to, let's see, uh, classic standard, I think, let's see, standard view. That's more of a modeling view. Oh, here it is, animation. I knew they had an animation, but you can see it gives you a, a more exact timeline here, down here with this thing, right? You know, our, um, this, this graph editor, which we're not gonna do a lot of tweaking with now. So if you right click on this, I can close each one of these tabs. So I'm closing the timeline and the um, graph editor. So I'm only looking at this, right? So if you miss that, if you click on animation, it'll bring those up. What I did is I right clicked on the little, these dotted lines here. So let's start off with my first animation. I'm gonna make each one of these roughly 30 frames. And 30 frames translates to one second. So I'm on frame one here. I'm gonna go ahead and change one to a zero by just typing in zero here. So now my animation starts at zero and I'm gonna go all the way to 30 here. So I'm typing 30. Now I'm gonna do some very basic, um, uh, just some like really basic animation. So nothing too crazy. So with this middle joint selected, right? And I'll uncheck my mesh to make this a little bit easier. I'm going to set, uh, I want to lock this position on the timeline into place. So if I hit zero here and I press the S key, S is in Sam, then I click on 30 and I press S is in Sam. Now mind you, I have this middle joint selected. What I want to do is um, 
I want the walk to look something like this. So something like a fun little walk as it's moving. So what I'm going to do is go in 10 frames. So something like this. And on frame 10, I'm actually going to turn this, um, make sure this is on. This automatically sets a key for me. And you'll notice that there's all these rotate properties, right? On rotate Z, you can see I have my left and right. I'm just going to type in, let's say, minus 12, right? So you can see from my front view, it looks like this. So now you can see from 0 to 10, he leans this way. Let's right click in this view so you can see it in here. Leans this way, right? And then on 20, so roughly here, I'm going to type in 11. Now when I press play, you can see he's moving really, really quickly. So what's happening is it's not actually playing the animation in real time. So we want to turn that on so we can actually see what our animation would look like in-game. So you'll see this little guy. I call him the Dunkin' Donuts guy. It's our um, animation settings. So click on that and bring up your preferences. And what we want to do here is you can see there's time slider is the first thing that pops up. We have play every frame. We want to actually do 24 frames per second at one frame. And I'm going to go ahead and... Um, save that and now when you press play it'll actually play it in real animation timeline mode so you can see I left click in here you can see the way he walks if I click in here you'll see how he sort of walks in view now I think it needs to be a little more exaggerated so I'm going to select that middle joint again go all the way to 10 I might, I might push that a little bit more maybe really go to let's see minus 40 here and then I'm going to click on that 20 right here's 20 and I'm going to do 20 here or 40 rather, which is the inverse. And now when I press it, you can see he's got like a nice little, more of a little kind of like happy walk, right? So our run or our walk is done. Let's go ahead and go change this to frame 31. Or actually, let's go 30 here. And then from frame 30 to 60, um, what I want to do is select that same middle joint, right? And then on 60, I'm going to press S to set a key. So 30 and 60 are the same, right? And I'm going to go ahead and do my, like, punch or my attack or something, right? And so for my punch, I'm just going to go to the halfway point between 30 and 60, right? Which is uh, roughly, what, 45, right? So, um, and I'm just going to rotate that forward. Let's make sure that we're doing it uh, maybe on the Y-axis. And that's how my attack is going to look. And maybe we could do a particle effect where something shoots out. So now you can see that's what my attack is on 45. It'll play that attack. All right. So I have my walk or my one, my run and my attack. Now let's do the jump. So let's change 30 to 60 here. And then let's go all the way to 90. Same thing with that middle joint selected. I'm going to go to 90, hit S to set a key. Now for my jump, I'm actually going to use code to um, move my can off the ground. So I don't want to move it in here, otherwise it'll double jump. I just want to give the impression, or I want to fake, that my can is jumping. So I'm just going to stretch this out. So when I hit the space bar or whatever, and I go to play, it's going to play this like jumping animation. So it does this kind of squash and stretch motion. Um, and then let's do a dead and death. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this to 90. And I'm going to go 120. And uh, again, selecting that middle joint. And I'm going to click on 120. Hit S to set a key. So I know that's the same, right? Come on. So let's select that middle joint. Uh, did that get screwed up? Okay. Select that middle joint, hit S to set a key. And um, for this one, I'm not going to let it loop. That's why I made those the same. What I think I'm going to do is select this bottom joint here, go to 90 to set a key, so I know that it's stuck there. And then on 120, I'm just going to rotate this down and maybe move it so my can, because this black line represents my ground, and just sort of move it up like that. So what we get is something that looks like this. 
he's kind of rolling and he dies. Okay? So that's our death animation. So let's go ahead and type a zero here so we can see them all on the same timeline. So on zero, we have our walk, our head attack, our jump, and our death. All right, now you gotta sort of remember these, right? There's zero to 30, walk, run. So a lot of times they'll have an actual animation um, uh, document that sort of documents all this stuff, like it'll be a separate sheet. Um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to end this here. This is the end of our animation. In the next video, we'll work on bringing it into Unity and scripting it.